In this video, I'm going to show you how to process audio on input in Reaper. Now, the purpose of this video is to show you how we can process or treat our audio before we bring it in to Reaper. Let's say you have an effects chain set up to affect your audio in a very specific way. We could apply that or process it on the way in. This way our file is ready to be worked with. Now in this video, I'm gonna use an example that I use every day. But of course, for you, you're probably gonna do it a bit different with a different effects chain and different effects. But I think you'll still get the idea. So a project set up here where I wanna edit my narration for my tutorial. A tutorial very much like this one. So without this trick, I would normally do it like this. I would select the track I want to import it to. I would go up here to the insert menu and insert a media file, which opens up my hard drive and I have a file right here with my voiceover. I could double click it and that brings in that audio file right here placed on this track. As you can see, it's a stereo file, but because it's just narration, it's really mono. But in the program I used, it always exports audio as stereo. So the first thing I want to do is change that. So I'll right click the item, go to item settings, and choose take channel mode mono or down mix. And that combines the left and right channels to create and make this file mono before and after. So that's the first thing I want to do. Next, I want to apply some effects to it. And I've already set up an effects chain on this track to do that. But let's go through it. First, I have a high pass filter, which cuts off the low end at around 90 hertz to remove any low end rumble. Then I get some noise reduction with the Reaffer plugin right over here. Then a three band splitter, which splits the frequencies into multiple channels from zero to 150 hertz, 150 hertz to 4.5 kilohertz and 4.5 kilohertz and above. Three separate frequencies I can treat differently. And we can see on the plug-in pin connector how it's split out, channels one and two to one through six for low, medium, and high. And then after that, I have three compressors. A low-end compressor, which just compresses the low end, a mid-range one, which just compresses the mids, a high-end one, which just compresses the highs, and then a channel mapper down mixer, which combines all these channels back to one and two. And then an EQ at the end, which boosts the mids and cuts the upper highs. And then finally, a limiter to make sure there's no overs on our track. Let's hear it before. Now when you first open Reaper and after. Now when you first open Reaper, so that's how we're processing this audio. But I want to render this file with these effects and then edit the result. And we could do that by putting this effects chain on the item instead. Hold on Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, and just drag it and drop it here. Now the effects chain is on the item instead. It's no longer on the track, but it's still going to sound the same. Now, when you first open Reaper, before, now, when you first open Reaper and after. Now, when you first open Reaper, so I could process this just by gluing this file. We could right click, go down here to glue items, and now it's going to process that file with all the effects that are on that item or take. And then when it's done, it looks like this before and after. And now it sounds like this. Now, when you first open Reaper, perfect. Now, as you can tell, that's a lot of steps to go through. I prefer to do is import it and process it at the same time. And we could do that with a custom action. So let's undo all this and let's create a custom action. We'll go up here to the actions menu, show action list, and let's search insert media. We could choose this action right here, which is going to insert any media we want, which would be the first step of a custom action. 
We'll go down here to new action, new custom action. And that creates a new custom action with insert media files as the first action to be triggered. Let's give it a name. And now we could add actions to this list to be triggered all at once. If you remember, the first thing we did was to change the file to be mono. So let's search in the filter, mono down mix. And we could choose this action, which is going to change the channel mode to be mono or down mix. So the left and right channels will be combined to a mono file. Then we want to add the effects chain to the item we import. Now, in order to create an action to do this, we need to first create an effects chain. So let's save this for now and close it. Let's go to the effects on this track. With the effects chain, we want to save and right click it, go to effects chains, and choose save all effects as effects chain. And we'll give this effects chain a name and save it. And now, double click over here, go to the effects chains, and we can see it right here. Now, in order to use this in a custom action, we need to create a shortcut for it. So right click it, create shortcut. And we don't have to add a keyboard shortcut here. We can just cancel it and it'll still work. So now we can close this. We can delete the effects that are over here. Alt on the PC, option on the Mac. Go back to the action list. And let's find the custom action we created right here and edit it. Now we're going to add that effects chain afterwards. We'll search for it in the filter and it shows up right here. Narration effects. Drag it over. And now this custom action is going to insert media files, change the channel mode to mono, and add the effects chain to our item. And then finally, we want to glue the item. So the effects chain will be printed or rendered to a new file. So we'll type in glue, choose glue items, ignoring time selection, drag it over. Now we could save this as a custom action. We're just going to insert, change it to mono, add the effects to the item, and finally glue it all together or process with the effects on it. So we'll save it. Now we can add a keyboard shortcut to this custom action right over here. But what I prefer to do is add it to the toolbar. So we'll right click up here, go to customize toolbar, and go down here to add and find that custom action right here. Select and close it. And it shows up down here. We can change the toolbar button by right clicking and just choose any button we want. I like to use this one for a waveform. Close it. Now it's going to show up like this. Hit OK. Now we get that button right up here. So now we could select this track. We want to put our cursor in the range window by clicking here. We want to paste it or typing W to put it back to the beginning to make sure the track isn't in focus. Because if it is, it's going to add the effects to the track. We don't want to do that. We want to add the effects to the item. So make sure you click over here first before we run this custom action. Then we can go over here and choose it. The dialog opens up asking us which media or audio item we want to import. Just choose this one. And then everything happens automatically. This effects chain is being processed on the audio file or the media item. And when it's done, it looks like this. We could zoom in to see it a bit clearer. It's all cleaned up. Now we could edit that final file, which sounds like this. Now, when you first open Reaper, perfect. So let's undo this so we could see each step that was performed with this custom action. I'll hit undo for each step. And now we're back to the beginning. So now we can hit redo to review each of those steps. The custom action triggered automatically. Hit redo once, and the file was imported. But as you can see, it's stereo with no effects on it. Hit redo again. Now it's changed to mono. Redo again. 
Now it added the effects or the effects chain to the item. Hit redo again. And now it's processed that file. So it did all that in one step. Before, we had nothing. And afterwards, just by hitting this button, we get the finished file, all processed and ready to go. With all the compression, EQ, noise reduction, and limiting, we wanted to add to the file. And again, your effects chain is probably gonna be a bit different, but the steps are basically the same. Just by hitting one toolbar button or keyboard shortcut, it's gonna ask us to import the media item and it's gonna process it on the way in, giving us a finished file to work with. So that's pretty much it. That's how to process audio on import in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go. Oh!